last week, the government were talking about a herd immunity strategy whereby 60% of the population would get coronavirus in a reasonably short space of time, so over a sort of four or five months. And then ultimately, we'd get through it. And then by next winter, enough people would be immune or, or have some immunity to coronavirus for us not to have another peak um, next winter, next Christmas. Um, we still don't know whether or not whether, whether that immunity will happen. I mean, what, what most people are suggesting is that with a normal coronavirus, you do get immunity and it tends to last a year or two. So it, Cold it, is three months, right? Uh, well, I've, uh, different types of colds can be different lengths. So a cold can be anywhere between three months and, and two that years. That was re- re- Dr. Re- Teresa, yeah, she but said. I, but I think it's, it, it's more mm. likely to be at least a season. Right. So, so Until the next strain so, comes so there, along. Yeah, anyway. so the, the science behind it wasn't completely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, yeah. What was completely ridiculous is the idea that the health service could handle 60% of the population getting coronavirus yeah. in a four-week period, no, sorry, four-month period. And this became, you know, it, it seemed over the over the weekend that maybe the government had shifted their strategy but weren't being particularly honest about it. After we finished our show on Monday, it got made public that actually the modelling that the government had been basing their strategy on yeah. was completely wrong. Um, it was wrong because they thought that only a very small proportion of people who entered hospital would be you know, would have to go over into ICU to have ventilators and to have a much more intensive regime of care from the NHS. Um, and that whilst the, 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 the strategy, this, so the modelling when you actually put in the, the right data instead of the wrong data shows that the government strategy as it currently existed would kill 250,000 people. Um, the the modelling also showed that if the government took a different strategy, so moving the government, what they said is we're going to delay, which means we're going to accept that basically most people are going to get it, but we're tr- going to try and what they always say, flatten the curve. Yeah. Um, this this paper says that actually if they suppress it, which is to say we try and stop, as we try and make as few people pass on this disease as possible, we can get deaths down to about 20,000. Now, obviously, it's good that the people who are making this model realise their mistake. That's great. But the fact that the government were pursuing the wrong strategy, and it was always a high-risk strategy, even if it was the right strategy, it was always a strategy whereby the downside of it is fucking awful, and the upside yeah. of it is just that we have slightly less disruption. Well, we, we, we were talking about this, what, a week, two weeks ago? Yeah, and we exactly. said, how do you communicate something which says, well, look, a lot more people are going to die now than other countries, but it's going to pay off in a year's time. And you, even just a week later, you look at that and you think, wow, that was mm. insane. Yeah. But in, 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 in any case, so what, was, what was important in, in revealing this is it became clear that the modelling was wrong, right? And what we heard all last week from the government was anyone who said, we think your strategy sounds overly risky. The idea that you are just going to let this virus run wild in the hope that enough people get herd immunity. We're not sure we're comfortable with that. And what were we told, not just by the government, but also by Laura Koonsberg, Robert Peston, all of the media was like, the government are being led by the science. We were even told there were headlines saying, Boris Johnson was thought of as a populist. He's proven he's not because he is being led by the science. That whole period of time, there were people from the World Health Organization, I mean, a bunch of incredibly reputable scientists, the editor-in-chief of The Lancet, saying that this this strategy is crazy. Every other state around the world. Every other state around the world (laughs) saying that this is not how coronavirus works. We were told, no, 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 listen to the science, listen to the science. So I thought the fact that this had been revealed would mean that actually maybe the media would become a bit more critical um, about what the government means when they say we're being led by the science. For example, the Labour Party were calling all over the weekend for this modelling to be made public. They were saying at least if if the outcomes of this modelling seem a bit counterintuitive, we should at least be able to see the modelling. If this modelling from Imperial College had been made public a week ago, someone would have noticed that mistake, right? And, 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 and so I was hoping that the BBC would, would change their tune. But let's look at actually how this was covered. So we can go to now a tweet from the BBC News. Suppression is the only viable strategy at the current time. And it says the science has shifted dramatically, which is why people in the UK are now facing huge changes to their daily lives. So it's the science that has shifted. This wasn't, there's no, no, nothing about politics here. This was the science that shifted. And the, the official line is new information has emerged. It was, we only realised this many people were going to ICU when we looked at Italy. We're, I'll show you in a moment why that's bullshit. But <laughs> let's now look at the Beth Rigby tweet. So she's political editor at Sky. Um, analysis. We've talked about another of her big tweets where she she always puts them in analysis and then just writes what could be a government press release. Why the step change? The facts have changed. A senior government source told me last night, we've had to accelerate. We thought we could put these measures off for another week and push social shielding back a week after then, but we've had to bring it forward. 
Um, so she said, the science has changed. There was no mistake that was made. New information emerged, and our government, who were being led by the science, responded to that new information and changed policy. That's complete bullshit. Um, and don't just take that from me, because I know, you, you know I've, I've always been very open with the fact that I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not even a scientist, right? Um, so take it from the editor-in-chief of The Lancet, Britain's most prestigious medical journal. I will take his tweet. Laura Koonsberg says that the science has changed. This is not true. The science has been the same since January. What has changed is that government advisors have at last understood what really took place in China, what is now taking place in Italy. It was there to see. When I saw that yesterday morning, I quote tweeted that saying, look, this guy should be on BBC yeah. News because there's been a fuck up here. I watched BBC News last night. The, the package included, you know, it, it didn't mention the w, WHO, didn't mention that the government adopting this strategy was controversial. All they said was the science has changed. They said new information has emerged from Italy, which means the science has changed. They interviewed two experts. Who were the two experts? They were both people from Imperial College who had worked on the original modelling. You know, it's like you couldn't, you couldn't make it up. Like the, the BBC at this point in time, for, for the government to be creating good policy, which keeps us alive, has to be holding their feet to the fire, not, not just yeah. attacking them for the sake of it, because obviously we, we, you know, it's one of the few occasions where we at Navarra Media want the Tory government to succeed, you know. Um, but but to, uh, to make sure that the advice they're giving is the correct ones and the actions they're taking is the correct ones. And nothing has, you know, you're saying Theresa May's line, nothing has changed. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen that the science that the, the government is accepting is not, you know, sent from God. It can be mistaken. In this case, it was seriously, dramatically mistaken and lies will be lost because of it, which means that this needs to be public, which means that scrutiny needs to be allowed, not dismissed. And that means that our, our media establishments need to take their job seriously. Mm -hmm.